three engineers are gonna compete to design the best PCB in only two hours. Okay, let's get started. Ready, set, go. And we have uh, Victoria is using uh, KiCad. Craig is using DipTrace. He's kind of an oddball using DipTrace, but we, we let him join in anyways. Easy. And, <laughs> and then uh, Nicholas is also on uh, KiCad. Okay, let's see what everyone's doing. So I see Victoria's got the STM32 marker controller down. She is looking through the data sheet. Craig has got some of it down, but he can't find the ESD. I'm going to have to go generic and just make a footprint. Yeah. That's where, yeah, I downloaded the symbol. It doesn't have the pins for some reason. Now, each engineer is going to be designing the same board, which is going to include an STM32 microcontroller, a USB-C port for programming and power, a buck regulator, and a temperature humidity sensor. I'm just going to put this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see if we got... Uh... Ooh, yeah. EDA models. There you go. I bet no dip trace love, though. Do any of you tend to prefer STM32 microcontrollers, or do you kind of vary from project to project? Honestly, the ESP is so cheap and so good that it's hard to justify any other processor. Yeah, except the... it's, you know, if you don't need the wireless, then it's it's quite overkill, or if you... But that, that's the thing is that it's still, it's still cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If cost is, I guess, if cost is your driver, then yeah, I could see that. But if power consumption or, you know, some other, other more advanced features that STM offers. I've actually never used the STM. I usually use the AVR con microcontrollers, especially like uh, those AT Tinies. They're just great for doing little basic stuff and they're really cheap. I've seen those on Arduino, but I haven't used any of those personally. They're awesome. Nicholas is connecting up the buck regulator. Looks like he's figuring out his resistors to give the output voltage he needs. So it looks like Craig is getting his differential data lines set up from the USB-C connector. Oh no, sounds like I'm falling behind. Oh, well, he's still in the schematic, so. <laughs> oh, not... I thought you meant layout. I'm like, no, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Get this show on the road. Tori is getting her ESD connected. I forgot about that. You don't have your ESD yet, Nicholas? Here, I was just about to say, you're looking like you're in the lead, maybe, on the schematic. Oh, no. Oh, we're going to have to shut that down. Okay, we are 30 minutes in. Oh, God. Easy money. Wait, money? Craig, you're looking like you're getting pretty close to being done with the schematic, aren't you? You're getting there. So, looks like Tori is uh, connecting up the bootstrap capacitor for the switcher which uh, for those that don't know is basically just for a charge pump. It, you see that bootstrap, it means the top side driver is an in type and you, you need a gate voltage higher than the input voltage. So that's the purpose of that bootstrap capacitor she's adding. I'm learning so much, John. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you getting connected up, Craig? It looks like your schematics mostly yeah, done. Oh, you're still doing the oscillator on there. I'm second guessing this oscillator, but uh, okay. I, think I'll, I think I'll be all right. And I forgot to ground my microcontroller. Very important. I haven't heard anything about temp sensors. Does everybody have their temp sensor in their design? Yeah, I'm already detecting that's 130 degrees outside. Craig's already got firmware written and... Uh, <laughs> wow. It's, it's been shipped. dashboard set up. Have you, like, connected up your, your switcher or anything yet, Nicholas? Are you still... The buck, yeah. You too. Oh, okay. Now, did you follow the layout guidelines in the data sheet? Good question. Yes, I would recommend looking at that. Craig, what's your complaint with the layout example for the switcher? A lot of the data sheets use, like, an actual, like, footprint... Oh, instead component. of them just showing you the they're, symbol for the conductor for the, the inductor. symbol in there, and it's just kind of weird. I'm, yeah, I'm just not used to it. Yeah, I feel like I've seen it both ways, but I mean, it makes it a little more generic. So if you're not, at, you know, that way you can use any inductor and still have the sure. same general layout. Yeah. What are you working on, Nicholas? I'm trying to make the designators smaller text for silk screen. Oh, he's putting final touches on things. Oh man. Okay, that looks good. That looks like a winner. Should I be cool and do my microcontroller at a 45 degree angle? Is that is that a cool thing to do? Oh my good grief. Uh, yeah. But then I have to start rotating like everything else 45 degrees to make it line up nicely. So I think I'm going to scrap that idea. Yeah, that sounds like a invite for problems. If I just stick this guy on the other side of the board, is that illegal? Right, save space. It's a good idea. Should I put the switch on the other side of the board, actually? Now we have to push the whole PCP down to reset it. It's a feature. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's a feature in PCB design. Have you used JLC PCB before, too? Is there a reason to go PCB way inside JLC? Their online tool is just not as good as PCB ways. For the quoting, you mean? For getting a quote? Right. Okay. Yes. Sam, I still use PCB way, but that's just because I... That's kind of what I started using and really switched away. I've always had good luck. The only the last design, I, I did have some 
issues with it um, that I should have caught when they, you know, I should have had them check the two different chips they oriented incorrectly, even though I had the pin one marked and uh, they put the header pins in upside down. Uh, I had a few issues like that. They've been really good about sending pictures. They, they'll, they'll build like one and let you check orientation of things and everything. And then, well, they did that with me, but, and you know, I take the blame for this as well. They sent me that. But all they did was ask me to check the orientation of two diodes. Um, so I kind of assumed that they, you know, I'd seen the markings and were confident in the chips. So I checked the two diodes and they were right, but I didn't check any of the chips until I got it. And, you know, it just, you know, plugged it in. It just instantly pulls like amps of current. Did you have a current limit set on your power supply or did you have a house fire? No, there was a current limit, yeah. <laughs> That's good. The old smoke test. <laughs> yes. I always give it one arm length between me and the power supply <laughs> and the and the board. I close my eyes and I push the button. Yeah. To yeah. The power <laughs> also a good technique. Tori, are you working on your switcher? Is that what it looks like? Uh, this is my USB-C right now. Oh, okay. I just saw your, you've got the layout. Oh, oh yeah. For that. I kind of worked on here a little bit and then I'm like, oh, but my uh, board needs power from the USB. So I guess slowly getting there. Is everyone doing a, just a two layer board? I've got four because I was just going to pop a VIA down to a 3.3 volt okay. plane. And, gotcha. In hopes of one day shrinking this. Yes. Plus, I feel like, I guess, I don't know. I know some people feel strongly about every microcontroller design is better with four. I lean toward four, especially for any wireless design. I always yeah. do four, uh, just so you can have a good ground, solid ground plane. But uh, Oh, absolutely. For this design, I think two layers is probably sufficient. But is, the, is it the best? Does somebody get more points for using a... <laughs> yeah. Yes, Victoria, you get bonus points. <laughs> what is U3 again for you, Craig? Uh, that's the switcher. Oh, that's the switcher. Okay. Oh, okay. I recognize the SOT 23. I'm surprised, Craig, you like to work with your, your copper pour uh, yeah. filled. Usually I always I always like to unfill them when I'm making changes. I see you keep it filled while making changes. Actually, I set up a shortcut key so I can keep filling them because every time I move something, it doesn't update. So I yeah. can like redo oh, it. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. I see what you're doing. Okay. And so then I don't have to come in there later and fix all my problems. I don't think you can ever fix all of your problems, but hey. <laughs> Do any of you guys ever use a uh, blind or buried vias, or do you pretty much only stick to the through-hole vias? On rare occasion. Yeah, yeah, there's got to be a good reason to use them, I think. It oh, yeah, especially that. with the complexity of the manufacturing costs. And... Oh, yeah, yeah. that's especially for prototyping, man, it really adds a lot of cost. It, it kind of fades away once you get up to really high production volumes, but... Absolutely. Okay, it looks like Craig and Victoria are both on a via frenzy. Looks like you've switched to... Uh, Trying to do a double-sided board, Nicholas, to make it smaller, I guess. It's kind of weird because I think I didn't do this right. I think there must be a way to have two PCBs reference the same schematic. But when I did a copy as first PCB, since it has a different name, it was looking for a schematic with the different name as well. And I'm not sure how to have it reference the same one. 13 minutes left. 13. Oh, man. Oh, God. I didn't even run the differential period. Hmm. 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 <laughs> You're boxed in, aren't you? Yeah, I boxed myself in. I gotta, I gotta reroute that. I'm gonna rethink how that's gonna work. Okay, five minutes remain. Have you uh, tried to run any verification? Let's see. Only seventy-five errors. Not too bad. Oh well, that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, it's usually from all the no connects. They're not. Yeah, yeah, connects. yeah. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of. Them. Okay, one minute left. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna finish this in that time. I think mine might work. It might not work great but i think everything is connected well if any of these boards worked without running the verify the verification that would be uh that'd be quite impressive it'd be a miracle okay time is up put your mouse your mice down hands in the air <laughs> i'll start with uh, victoria if you want to just point out the components and everything on your board so it does not get better than this board right here and uh the usb is right here we've got our cc1 resistors tvs diode and then look at that nice differential trace there and here's my power supply honestly if i did it again i would bring it a little bit more over here and compact my board quite a bit i feel like i've got a lot of dead space the pastors that kind of didn't find their home in time and some of them did I was just going to say, I like your layout for the switcher. It looks like you used copper pores. Oh, yeah. And uh, the temp sensor is up here. And I did not forget my essential I2C pull-up resistors. Okay, excellent. Oh, I like the back. That looks nice. Oh, yeah. Nice and nice and clean. Here. Nice and flat and clean <laughs> and everything. 
Okay, Craig, you want to show us what you've got? Oh, nice and long. I like it. Oh, yeah. You want, okay. Looks like a... You want to go 3D? Yeah, or 2D, whichever, both. We'll do both. I guess uh, I'm missing a lot of 3D models, so there's that. But you can imagine there's a USB connector right there. So, yeah, that goes to the... Uh, the configuration resistors and I was working on this this differential connection to the uh, the uh, ESD diode here but I was having some troubles there that leads to the, the power supply here tried to follow, follow the recommended layout from the data sheet uh, did some copper pores in there uh, I need to connect more uh, vias I like to stitch the top ground plane to the bottom ground pane plane as much as I can so needs okay. a lot more is that large component there? Is that a is that your inductor there? Right That's there? my inductor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I found a I found a nice package where I didn't have to create the footprint by myself. So okay. That's good. That's good. Microcontroller. These are the I two C configuration resistors. There's a pull up resistor here for the uh, boot line. Or sorry, it's a pull down, and then the switch uh, pulls it up. You can put it in different modes and things. And then I didn't move these uh, caps close enough to the to the microcontroller. Yeah, it's decoupling caps. And then the oscillators here, and then on the other side, I've I put the uh, the temperature sensor, because I thought that might be cool to isolate that. Since you want to kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe you could drop it down into something and it's reading a temperature. I don't know. That was my thought. No, I like it. It looks good. No real room for mounting holes. Maybe you can use hot glue to put it yeah. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, Nicholas, if you want to show us what you've got. Yes. Yeah, so USB C there. Um, CCs. ESD. Uh, temperature sensor there, E1. I think this was a temperature sensor, E3. Reset switch, uh, inductor layout, buck regulator. I think the only thing I didn't do was the copper pores, but it's only less than 100 milliamps. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this other battle video where two engineers compete to design the best PCB in only one hour. Be sure you check this video out.